Thank you, Highest Good. It's amazing, beautiful. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, uh, Reverend Mary Beth, for facilitating the service. Actually, we had some very good news this week. Uh, Reverend Mary Beth had some very good news. She actually was awarded her doctorate in consciousness studies this week. So I now need to call her Dr. Reverend Mary Beth. And <laughs> And this is good news, because my, my mother always wanted me to marry a doctor. <laughs> so, finally, after all these years, right? Um, anyways, th there's another significant event happening this coming month for us. Uh, very significant. We're celebrating our 28th wedding anniversary. Now, thank you. Now, that unto itself is wonderful, but... To celebrate it, on top of it, we're returning to the very place we met uh, 28 years ago at the religious, it's, actually it was Religious Science International, now it's Centers for Spiritual Living, annual conference in Pacific Grove, California. And we met there on the first morning in the breakfast line, and uh, we were probably married about, we got engaged eight days later to be exact. <laughs> and we were married three months after that. Yes, I do fast work, so, or we do fast work, but we knew what we knew. And the main reason I'm talking about this this morning and want to share a bit about it is it's not just the actual event, because I know a lot of us have wonderful stories in different areas of our life, but it's, what's most important about this story is what went on before it. It's all important, it's all wonderful, but what went on before it that allowed that event to happen for us to meet on the first morning in the breakfast line at Asilomar that year. That's what it took for us to get there, because from the moment we met, we knew that something significant had happened in our lives. We knew that we had met a special person, the special person. We'd actually been at that same retreat the prior year. As a matter of fact, I had been there many years, but we were both there the prior year. Now, Mary Beth claimed she had seen me at some point <laughs> with a group of people I was with from the Oak Park Church of Religious Science, and she apparently even waved to me. I have no recollection of that. <laughs> we know we were literally in the same... There's about 1,000 people at this retreat, but there's a lot of little small workshops. We know we were in one of those small workshops together, we know we sat through a lot of the big conferences together. We know that we were at events together. They have a dance and all that. We never met, never saw each other, no recollection of any of that. The thing is, I realized, and we both realized, we weren't ready to meet yet. Why did it not happen that year? We weren't ready to meet that year. We both still had more work to do, more work to do in our lives, more, more of our spiritual work, if you will, if you know what I'm talking about. We had been on similar paths for many years. We had both been studying metaphysics and new thought for many years. And through different, all sorts of different mediums, but particularly around religious science, science of mind, we had both been around unity. So there was a lot of commonality. And I want to share how this looked for me. I'm not going to really tell Mary Beth's story and what she, what the type of work she did, which was, was, was a lot probably in some respects even more than I did. But for me, I started my spiritual path sometime back in the early 80s. Shortly after I had gone through a divorce uh, with a woman I had been with for 14 years since I was 17 years old. And it was sort of a wake-up call, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you can remember ever going through something like that in your life, particularly at a younger age, and we're all younger, so don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> and getting younger by the day. But it was a time when I said something wasn't working in my life. I just said this isn't working. And I've had a few of those in my life, but that was the big one. When it was suddenly a wake up, you know, I said, like coming out of my, I think I was in my younger 30s at that time, and I said, hey, this, something's not right here. It's not working. I don't understand. So the universe answered, and out of the blue, I got a call from a cousin of mine in California, and she told me about a program, program called Actualizations by a man called Stuart Emery. It was actually an offshoot of EST, if any, any of you remember about EST. It was not EST, but it was one of the offshoots that came out of it. 
So next thing I know, I'm out in San Francisco, and I, twice, two, a, a week each, I spent two weeks in San Francisco attending this program, which kind of burst me open into looking at life through new eyes. Uh, a path of self-discovery, which is, I think, why we're all here, because no one walks into a unity and stays around unity unless you're open to some self-discovery, right? And looking at life through new eyes, that's really what we do here. It opened up floodgates for me, and I wanted to just seek more, learn more, grow more at that point. I couldn't turn back. Once I was there, that was it. So a couple of years later, around 1985, I discovered the first Church of Religious Science in downtown Chicago, on Dr. Carlton Whitehead at the time, and I started attending services there every Sunday, and I started taking classes, and I was just, blo I was just uh, blown away with this stuff. I was captivated by it. And I also started at the same time occasionally going to Unity services out at Unity Chicago. Um, and went back and forth between those two, studying metaphysics, studying new thought. And it was like a light had gone off on my head. You can remember the first time you were introduced to these concepts, that idea of when you finally got it, you said, wow, this actually exists. There's another way to look at life, another way to do life, another way to think about life, right? And I continued on that path for quite some time, and around that same time, sometime in the mid-80s, I got involved in another relationship with, with another woman, and um, that went on for about five years. And again, I got, and during that time, I would continue to do my studies and my spiritual work with religious science. And around that time, when I got to the end of those five years and the end of that relationship, it was time again to grow. It was sort of another wake-up call in my life, a time to step up once again. So I decided then to, I needed a big change in my life, a cha major changeover. So I sold the townhouse I owned in, Deer in the South Loop for about 11 years. I pretty much got rid of everything I owned. I rented an apartment up in the Lincoln Park area. And um, for me, it was going into my cave. I decided I was not going to date for a while, and I didn't. And I decided I was going to do a new round of work, looking at things differently. I continued my spiritual work with religious science, and I got involved with the Oak Park Church of Religious Science around that time. I also got involved with a men's group uh, called the New Warriors um, that is now called Project Mankind. It's, it's been around for a long time. So I started doing a lot of levels of work. I got very involved with doing yoga and all sorts of different things. And essentially, it was a time of um, a, a mental, spiritual, and physical renaissance for me. I knew I needed to just find myself again and really, for the first time, learn who I was. I, and this went on, finally, for some time. I kept doing my work. And then somewhere around 1995, I think I was ready because I was ready to have some, something new in my life. And along came Mary Beth in 95 at Spiritual Conference in uh, California. What happened through this and what I get now, and it's easy to look at this sometimes looking back, but I think we got this one pretty quick because Mary Beth had been doing a lot of the same path. She had been through a lot of her own work, relationships. We were just coming out of relationships, both of us. And the only thing we could conclude from this, he said, it was time. Why didn't we meet the previous year? It wasn't time. A lot of other things went on. This was time for us to meet because we had done our work. I had cleared the deck. I was open and receptive. And I was ready to have a relationship, the love of my life, walk into my life. And that's what happened. I trusted the law. And that's the title of my talk today. I trusted the law. It took me a while to do that, but I had faith that if I turned over the situations in my life and let go and released and stopped trying to control everything in my life and fix everything. Anyone else here like to occasionally control and fix things in your life? <laughs> oh, just one or two of you, huh? <laughs> so, by the way, a shout out to our online audience this morning. I don't think I said good morning to you, but good morning everyone online. So glad you're with us. So trusting the law, I allowed myself, I allowed myself to do it. I allowed myself to let go and let God. So 
said, Spirit, bring, out, bring it on. Bring it on, Spirit. Whatever needs to happen in my life, whatever is for my highest and greatest good, at the right time, at the right place, and that right time and right place in that area of my life happened to be right then and there. Trusting the law. This is really a continuation of a talk, the talk that Reverend Mary Beth did last week. I should say Dr. Mary Beth did last week. I'll just call you Mary Beth, okay? How's that? No, I get too serious about this. This will get weird, right? Come into the house and say, hi, doctor. Um, last week, Mary Beth spoke about the law and compared it, as the teacher Jesus did, to planting seeds. If any of you heard that talk, you might recall that. And what she said is that you can't go out and plant marigold seeds and expect to get petunias. That's the teaching. You know, we reap what we sow. That's how the law of mind works. Whatever we put out there comes back to us. So trusting the universe means I'm going to trust that which I desire. And I apply that principle in every area of my life, and not just in relationships. I apply it in the area of physical health and well-being. I apply it in the area of finances. I apply it in the area of my work called creative expression. So up on the screen, please, if you'll read this. There is a, and this is a quote from Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science. There is a power in the universe that honors our faith in it. There is a law in the universe which exacts the utmost farthing, meaning that it will put out whatever it is we desire, the utmost, whatever it takes. Ernest Holmes once said that even if we, if we do a, a prayer, we call it spiritual mind treatment, and even if it means reaching out to the farthest areas of Africa or across the world to have that happen, it will happen. Do I know how to do that? I don't have a clue. Does spirit know how to do it? The infinite, powerful intelligence of this universe that created you and me? Absolutely it does. That law is often referred to as the law of mind. It's a creative medium, creative medium through which spirit works. It's a blind force that works upon our deeply, our most deeply held thoughts and beliefs, even those that, that we're not aware of. And it always knows how to say yes. It always says yes. God always says yes. And sometimes we're not sure why God's saying yes because we don't even know about those thoughts and beliefs that we're carrying around. I know that was true for me. I had no idea the first time I heard about this when Dr. Whitehead said to me, you know, you can change what you're thinking about. I said, well, how do I know what I'm thinking about? Sometimes I'm confused, you know. We, they say that maybe 70% of our thoughts and beliefs were put there by the time we were five, six years old. How do I know? He said, well, if you want to know what you're really believing about an area of your life, look at your experience. Because what you're experiencing is what you're walking around believing. And then you can change those beliefs, change your thoughts, change your life. Up on the screen, please, um, Ernest Holmes also said that our thought is operated on by a universal creativity which is infinite in its ability to accomplish. Those key words in that, infinite in its ability to accomplish. We're dealing with an infinite intelligence, which means there's no time and space in the infinite. I always like to say that anything that can exist does exist already. That means any problem, any issue you may be having in your life, the answer already exists. When? Is it a week from now? Two weeks from now? Three weeks? No, that's over here in the physical plane, in the plane of the infinite that we're working with in new thought and metaphysics, which is what we study here. It exists now. So our job and my job is to get in contact with that. And really, not even the context so much as just to turn it over and know that it's, let spirit do that work. And last week, week, Mary Beth said this. She said, we plant the seeds, God grows the trees, God has the hard part. And we say it's the hard part. It's really not hard for spirit. It just is. We just have to make our minds up and decide what it is we want. That's why when I do spiritual prayer work with people, when I, we call it spiritual mind treatment, I don't focus so much on what people don't want. 
I might be interested in what's going on in your life and to hear about it so I understand that I don't want this to occur anymore. But I'm more interested in what is it you do desire? What do I desire? When I do prayer work for myself, I have to get clear. I have to get clear on what is it I really desire in this area of my life, in this area of my finances, in this area of my work. And that's where the prayer goes because that's where we tap into the infinite and let God do what it's here to do open up those floodgates and let the channels come through us so we can experience the infinite possibilities that lie in front of us without exception. The only exception or limits are those that we put upon it. Does that make sense? I put limits upon it sometimes by walking around with my old negative beliefs and feelings and opinions, my anger, my hate, my resentment, whatever it is I'm feeling about other people, about myself. I block the flow. A lack of forgiveness blocks the flow. A resistance to giving and circulating in my life blocks my finances. All those things are things that can block the flow of good in my life. I want to open up those floodgates. I want to break through them and turn it over to spirit and that spirit does what spirit does. Unto myself, I would have had no idea and had no idea that I would meet Mary Beth at that conference this year. I wasn't even necessarily looking to go find someone, although, you know, quite frankly, if you happen to be a man in New Thought, um, New Thought, I, you can pretty much, you know, you're going to meet a lot of <laughs> other people in New Thought. It's just how it happens to be. But I wasn't there looking or for that purpose. It just happened. And how did I know to be in the breakfast line at that exact moment to be right behind Mary Beth and her friend. How did I know that any of this was going to happen? I didn't. I just had turned my life over to spirit at that point in time. I knew I longed to have a relationship, a greater relationship in my life. I knew I wanted my life to look differently and Mary Beth was in that same exact place. So this divine law of attraction, if you want to call it that, brought us together in the right time, in the right way, in the right place 28 years ago, and we're still here to talk about, thank you, God. There's a great intelligence at work that we need to trust if we choose to. I say if we choose to, because when I say need, I talk about I need to trust. I always talk about this for myself, that I need to trust and know that this great intelligence is at work in my life right now, and I happen to know it's at work in your life right now. It's up to you to have that willingness within yourself. The law works the same in every area of our lives, whether it be relationships, money, finances, creativity, your work. A number of years ago, I remember I was working for a large accounting firm, because that's what I do in my, the other part of my life. I'm a forensic accountant and a CPA. Don't get scared, I don't work for the IRS. Don't worry. <laughs> and I don't do crime scene investigations. But I had a colleague that worked up in our New York office. I was with a large public accounting firm, and I just felt like he was trying to get in the way of my good. I was trying to pursue some opportunities up in New York, and I just had this feeling that he was trying to, he was getting in the way of my being able to get where I needed to go. Have you ever experienced something like that with people? You just get this feeling they're trying, they're, they're not out to help you, if you will. And I thought about it and I prayed on it. And I was pretty well steeped in this teaching at that time. And I said, you know what, this, this, I've realized, I've had this feeling before about other people and other situations. This is not the first time I've been here. In fact, I knew it was pretty much a, a pattern for me, a feeling competitiveness or feeling other people were trying to skid in the way of my good. I said, that is impossible. That's not true because we're all one with spirit and spirit is taking care of my good and taking care of their good. So that makes absolutely no sense on a spiritual level. So I said, I need to treat. I need to pray on this. I need to know that this is a good relationship that's going to be for my highest and greatest good. So I remember that morning, I was on my way to work, walking down Well Street, eight o'clock in the morning or whatever, pretty crowded, and I just started praying, and I prayed out loud, <laughs> and not softly. You know, thank God we're kind of used to it because people are on their cell phones talking out loud all the time. So I figured, well, people pr 
probably won't think I'm some crazy guy talking to myself, although I might have been. <laughs> but I prayed and prayed, probably for 10 minutes during my walk, until I said, okay, it's done. I know I've turned this over to God now. I've turned it over to Spirit. I know what I want. I know I've already prayed for what I want to have come out of this. I turned it over, I let it go. And by, I'll tell you something, that relationship, not only did it turn out to be extraordinarily fruitful for me in terms of the work and opportunities that came out of New York at that point in time, I developed one of the closest business relationships and personal relationships on some level with this individual that I've ever had. We had this amazing working relationship that it totally came out of my accepting and understanding that it wasn't about him and it never was about him. It's not about something out there and it never is. Conditions exist out there, right? I'm not denying that there's conditions and things that pop into our, in our lives that some of them may not seem that great, some of them may seem challenging, particularly if it's close to home with health or finances, but the power is not in those conditions. The only power in this universe is with God. And you and I have the ability to take and turn that around through changing our beliefs and the way we view it. As the teacher Jesus said, we turn the other cheek. I'm looking at things this way. I'm going to look at them differently. That's what I believe he meant when he said those words. I can change how I'm looking at things and change the situation because I am an expression of spirit. You and I are not separate. Spirit creates on the universal we create here on this plane by using this intelligence through our own thoughts and beliefs about life. And I could tell you countless other similar demonstrations that I've experienced, that Mary Beth's experienced, and other people that we know have experienced. But this only works when you have absolute faith and trust in God. When you have trust in the law, that there is a law Call it the law of attraction, call it what, you know, law of mind is what I like to call it, that always provides for our good. Up on the screen, there is a, and this is from Ernest Holmes again, I'm quoting a lot of Ernest Holmes today because he, uh, he was amazing on this topic. He said, there is one mental law in the universe, and where we use it, it becomes our law because we have individualized it. So you and I, as individualized expressions of spirit, can take this law and individualize it and put it to work for ourselves. And that's everything that we teach here in New Thought. We teach it here in Unity. When you hear Reverend Kitty, Mary Beth talking about, that's what we're talking about. We each have the birthright and ability to use it. It was given to us just by the nature of our being who we are. I always believed when I first got in this teaching that I was just stuck with conditions. I remember that, that you know, well, I can't change things going on in the world around me. And the fact of the matter is, some conditions and things and events going on around us, we can't necessarily make the event change or the condition change, we can change our relationship to it though. You see what I mean? If, if we're in a relationship that doesn't work, we're not going to necessarily change the other person. I've tried numerous times, it doesn't work. Right, right, Mary Beth? You know? <laughs> but I change me, and then the relationship changes. The, something happens. The same in work. I've had so many situations in work situations. Up on the screen again, please. When we change the way we think about the conditions in our lives, the conditions in our life change. When we change the way we think about the conditions in our life, the conditions in our life change. And this requires faith and trust that the law is always at work in our lives and that we can, and this is important, not only is it always at work in our lives, but we can consciously use it. And keep, keep that word consciously close to you because you have that ability, but it's a conscious act. It means we have to do the work. That's what we do here. We have to get reminded of it. I need to get reminded. I've been getting reminded of this for some 30 years now, and believe me, sometimes I forget about it. I forget to use it sometimes. I'm going to share... Oh, and one thing I want to say on this, too. 
is I want to invite you to not take my word for anything I'm saying this morning. Okay? Prove this to yourself just like I did. Prove it to yourself. And it took me a long time early on to do that. Not a long time, but I started working with this initially. I started playing with it. And then pretty soon I saw things starting to change in my life wherever I use these principles. Prove it to yourself. That's what I encourage you to do. Can we bring up the next slide, please? <clears throat> now this, I'm going to warn you, this is a tongue twister. So bear with me while I read this. From Ernest Holmes. Hence, it follows that if we believe that it will not work, it really works by appearing to not work. When we believe that it cannot and will not, then, according to the principle, it does not. But when it does not, it still does. Only it does according to our belief that it will not. You got that? <laughs> I warned you about that. The big question here is how do we work with this? How do we take it into our lives? How do you actually use this principle and put it to work? I know, typically, I can tell, and sometimes it takes me a little while, when I'm trying to force or coerce a condition in my life. And it's, I'm a, I'm a, it's clear to me. How do I know I'm feeling anxious? I'm feeling stressed. Maybe I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling concerned or worn out. And I'm pushing to make something happen. And I, that's how I lived my life for many years, and I still have that in me, where I want to push things, particularly in my work situations. I want to make things happen. It's just, just kind of my nature. But it, I know it doesn't work. At some point, I have to wake up. I have to remind myself of these principles. Over the last few months, I'm going to use something current. I've been dealing with a very challenging and seemingly contentious situation with a client, and it's actually based over in the Philippines, of all places. And I've applied all my knowledge and all my experience, and I've pushed and done everything I know, and it just seems to have gotten more and more contentious. It seems to have gotten worse. You ever you remember those little Chinese finger puzzles where you stick your finger in both ends of it, and then you go, I'm going to pull it apart. I'm going to pull this thing apart, and the harder you pull, the less it comes off, right? And the only way to get out of it is to let go, to release, and to be relaxed, and then your fingers come right out. That's how this works. I need a wake-up call. So I went through that wake-up call on this just a couple weeks ago, actually, and I said, you know what? I'm pushing too hard on this. I said, I'm trying to make this happen. It was actually maybe less than a couple of weeks ago, and I sat down and I prayed. I said, what do I want to have happen here? What I really desired <clears throat> was a fair and equitable resolution to this situation, and one that was somewhat effortless and not conscious, constantly on my mind. I wanted to turn it over to God. I wanted to let go and let God on this and trust that there was a law that could figure this out. Trust that there's a law that knows everything because every possible solution already exists in divine mind. It's there. I need to turn this over and then pay attention to the guidance and then move my feet accordingly. You know, it's sort of like, why did I wait so long? Wow, I could have had a V8, right? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you know, and that happens sometimes to me. It does. It'll take me a while, and sometimes Mary Beth will say to me, have you treated on this? Have you prayed on this yet? And I'll say, well, no. Have you called a practitioner? Have you reached out to a prayer chaplain? Well, no. So, and sometimes I can't see the forest through the trees myself. Sometimes I need someone else who can see clearly and not, is not caught up in this stuff, and that's true for all of us. That's why we have wonderful prayer chaplains here. You know, that's why for so many years I've been a spiritual mind practitioner and I'm there to support other people. We need other people to help us sometimes. Just this morning, I received an email on this same matter, as a matter of fact, that there had been some significant movement. It's not done yet, but some significant movement, unexpected, that I just did not expect it all to happen from some people that I thought were not going to help us and all of a sudden, out of the blue, it was literally out of the blue, this morning I get this email. I'm going, wow, well, I guess this stuff must work. You know? And while we're not there yet, pay attention to the little demonstrations that are happening. Just because you pray on something doesn't mean 
It's going to fall in my lap the next day. It's not going to happen. My prayers for the right and perfect relationship, probably when I started working with that, didn't happen right away. It took a while until I finally met Mary Beth. But things will start happening. Pay attention when you do your prayer work. Just know it's done, and Spirit got this one. God got this one. Just know that things are happening, and our job is just to be patient, pay attention, and move our feet as we see it's time to move our feet. So I want to invite you this morning to just look at a situation in your life, and there might just be one situation or experience you're having somewhere where you're confused or maybe having some issues that you don't know quite what to do with, or you'd like to see a different result in your life. You'd like to have something happen in your life, something experience, and any of those four, as we call them, the four corners in your relationships, in the area of your finances, in the area of your job, your work, your creative expression, um, and in the area of your health, too. Any of those areas. Anything that you might feel somewhat challenged with, stuck with, I'm going to go into some meditation here, and I'm going to invite you just to take that into mind, and I'm going to bring that into meditation. So, I'm going to invite you to just get comfortable, if you will, and allow yourself just to be present in this now moment, releasing anything that might be going through your experience now, any angst or concern. As I know right now that there is only one presence and one power, one intelligence God, the one life, the one universal presence, spirit, caught Christ consciousness, caught Buddha, caught whatever choose you choose to call it. It is the one power and the one life. So this morning, I know that this one intelligence, this one power, this one life is moving through me in perfect form. And as I speak this word for myself, I invite you to know it for yourself in this first person, I am, that I am an expression of this one life, this one power, this one intelligence. And it moves through me right now in perfect, amazing ways, allowing me to grow, to flourish, to live and love in every area of my life. Because I know Spirit has brought me here today without any accident to hear this message and to know it and to use it and to put it to work in my life. That truly God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And this magnificent power and presence and intelligence that I know is God created me in its likeness and image. It created me in its likeness and image with all the qualities of life, love, light, power, peace, beauty, joy, all these qualities that are that of spirit are also true of me. And I accept that this intelligence, this power is infinite, that everything that could exist already exists in the present here and now because there is no time or space in the infinite. There is no time or space in God. So I know that I have access to this intelligence. I am connected to the infinite intelligence of the universe. And I bring into this into this meditation, into this prayer, the knowingness that whatever situation it is that I have going on in my life that I desire to transform into a greater expression of good for me, that there is no power in this situation 
The only power is in God. That same creative power that I am one with. And it is God's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. In fact, it already has. I accept this kingdom this morning. I accept the kingdom of God this morning. Knowing that within this word that I speak and that we each hear as our own word, I'm setting free a greater expression of good in my life. I'm turning this situation over to God right now. I'm saying, Spirit, you already know what to do with this. You already know the right and perfect outcome for me. And I know that this right and perfect outcome is not only good for me, it's good for everyone. Any other people involved, any other situations involved, whether it be in my finances or in my work or in relationships or in my physical health and well-being. I know that spirit already has the right and perfect solution. That right and perfect solution is already present and already, as I speak this word, unfolding in my life. It is unfolding in perfect form in my life. In the right way, in the right time, in the right place. And I know that I am willing to release this and any desire I have to control the situation or fix this situation. I'm willing to release it to divine mind right now. I'm willing to let go and let God and I trust the law. I absolutely trust the law and have faith in spirit to lead, guide, and direct me in the perfect way at the perfect time. And I accept that I am willing to pay attention Pay attention to that which unfolds and move my feet as I see fit. I know I am attuned to spirit and that spirit already knows, already knows how to provide for my good in this situation and every situation in my life because this life is good, this life is God, and this life is my life now. So I say, thank you, Spirit. Thank you, God, for this expression of good that I know is already unfolding in my life. Accepting that this already is a complete and done deal. I turn it over to God. I let go. I let it be so right here and now by saying, and so it is. Amen. And I invite you just as you're ready to, to gently bring yourself back in the room when you're ready.